Hi, my name is Ali Duran with IBM Data Science and AI team. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to build a custom workflow using Planning Analytics works, Workspace and uh, leveraging data reservations. Um, if you're wondering what data reservations is, um, you can always go to IBM Knowledge Base uh, and search for using data reservations, TM1. Uh, why do we need the data reservations? Because uh, data reservation is going to uh, enable us to be able to um, use or block access to a specific cube. Um, for us to be able to use them though, it, it has to be enabled for our two burning grader TI uh, processes to function. If you are also into APIs, you can also uh, utilize data reservation within uh, API functions as well. Now, uh, the uh, modes is the part that we're interested in here and data reservation modes is um, something that we are going to be changing in one of our cubes called uh, square the bracket cube properties. It's a control cube. Uh, within that cube, uh, depending on the types of users you have, um, you can define um, uh, types of uh, reservation modes. For us today, I'm going to be using the required mode. Um, have this one disables uh, all write access for uh, any of the other users that are in the system and only the person who um, requests the access gets the, the access. Uh, there's also a shared mode. Uh, with shared mode, where you can have multiple users uh, using the same node. They can overlap. Uh, so that's also another functionality that we can leverage. But for today's demo, I'm going to keep it a little bit more simple. I'm going to, I only have uh, two users. One is an admin user and the other one is a, um, a finance, finance user. Uh, named Bob and Bob will be doing the planning and uh, the uh, performance management or the PM user is going to be doing the approving or rejecting of this budget. Now, um, if we look at the uh, processes a little bit that are involved in this um, uh, in this demo, uh, I have four of them that I have created. They are pretty much identical to each other with the exception of the um, the first process which is the one on the left hand side here, take ownership. Uh, this take ownership process, uh, the main difference here is the cube data reservation acquire. Now this one takes the basically the ownership of the uh, data set that is in the intersection of the, um, the parameters that I'm passing to the, the cube itself. And then uh, we put a lock on that uh, cube, um, you know, for that specific end user. Now, as far as the parameters goes, um, I have two cubes that I'm utilizing. The first one is the uh, workflow cube. The next one is the um, the data cube that I'm using. Uh, we, I'm also leveraging the uh, status uh, element within uh, one of my dimensions so that I can pass the status of the um, current node based on the actions that I'm taking, either taking ownership, submitting, approving, or rejecting. Um, I also have the user that I'm picking up uh, from the client's dimension. Um, I have the timestamp that I'm posting so that I know uh, for auditing purposes what time or what time of the day um, the change was done by whom. Um, and then uh, the the last two uh, sections in here, or the three sections in here, is the, the parameters that I'm passing, the first dimension and the second dimension. Uh, the second dimension, I opted out and uh, decided not to pass any parameters. I'm keeping it wide open. And uh, let's assume that this is the time dimension and these are the months that I'm uh, passing. Uh, as opposed to working on a single month, I'm basically uh, opening up or closing all the months uh, for the end users. And then the first dimension that I'm passing here is the, um, let's call this the units dimension or the accounts dimension that I'm going to be enabling or disabling based on the uh, functions that I'm uh, triggering. Um, finally, the section here is the cell put S that I'm posting. Um, I'm taking all that information that I gathered in here for the user and then the timestamp and then the status and I'm passing it into my workflow cube in order to be able to know what changed and who changed, who changed it and when did they change it. Okay, so um, next 
uh, is those three cubes that we need to update in order to be able to um, get the data reservations to work for uh, the user group. Uh, the first one that you need to be looking at is the uh, control cube called uh, cube properties. Um, I'm going to show you here on the left hand side. If I open up the next tab, you can find them under the control objects, under the cubes. And then if, you, if I scroll down a little bit, it's going to be this cube here, the cube properties cube. Okay. So the cube prop within the cube properties cube, uh, what I'm looking for is the uh, the cube that requires data reservation mode to be uh, turned on. And for us to be able to turn it on, what we need to do is the um, find the section where it says data reservation mode. First of all, that's the name of the element, and then find the um, element uh, within the cube's dimension uh, for our input cube which is my cube and then in the intersection right required now this for this user it's already been done it's already been set up because the administrator user has already set it up but um, if it wasn't set up this is what you should have done required is the uh, parameter that you should be putting in there now the next cube that we have in here um, is called the capabilities cube well, within the capabilities cube, what we're looking for is the user group called cam ID everyone. So uh, depending on how many users you have or how many user groups you have defined, you might have many or uh, multiple of these user groups uh, for your planning process. And uh, for me, the user group that I have chosen um, is the cam ID everyone. So I have assigned Bob to this uh, user group and uh, I need for Bob to be able to um, uh, execute certain reservation processes. Uh, I need to give him or grant him access to these two uh, sections. One is manage data reservation and then the second one is the data reservation override. He needs to access both of them in order to be able to either override or be able to um, uh, manage the data reservation by you know uh, releasing it or taking ownership of the um, data reservation so that uh, for him to be able to access that we have to give him uh, execute rights and then the final cube I have here is the uh, process security cube now as end users normally uh, uh, they wouldn't have access to the TI processes um, as you can see the final TI process that I have in here where I reset my demo uh, they don't have access to it as an end user, if I open up my left hand navigation pane and I look at the processes, I only see four processes, as you can see here on the right hand side. So they need access to that, those processes, so they need read access to those as well. Okay, so that's essentially the layout. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start planning like Bob does. So Bob comes in and uh, the first thing he needs to do, uh, he can see is, is a gray screen in here for his budget plan. And then there's a not started for the nodes that he has access to as far as the status goes. So Bob needs to take ownership of his nodes in order for him to be able to work inside a node. So as soon as he takes the ownership, he needs to refresh his screen and uh, he has access to um, the node now with a, a, a white cell indicating that he has access to it. Now, uh, um, there's another indicator here at the bottom of our screen. As you know, with our uh, turbo integrator processes that we triggered using these action buttons on uh, Planning Autics Workspace, we have uh, this um, information written to the intersection of C and status. And uh, the note C currently says, current owner is Bob since March 19, 2019, as of this time. So Bob can now go in, do his budget and plan. And he spreads $500 between uh, the columns H and K. And then he also says, okay, I need to also work on the um, node E. He's going to do that. He now takes ownership, he's going to go ahead and refresh the screen. So he has, he can see that it's white again. So he's going to enter another uh, 3,500 in here and maybe 500 in there as well. All right, so Bob is done. I mean, you can see the workflow status at the bottom of the page as the current owner. And if he needs to do more, he can continue to do more. But what he's going to do is he's going to submit the nodes that he is done with. So he's going to submit node E 
and then it's, he's going to also submit node C that he has worked on. Okay, so if I if Bob goes ahead and refreshes his screen, now the screen now turns into gray for him for the input plan, and on the bottom of the screen, uh, you can see that the workflow uh, section is already changed to orange color, and it says submitted by Bob on this time of the day. Okay, um, so we go to the next person now. Now that Bob is done, he's waiting for uh, PM, the other user that. Um, is his supervisor, let's assume, is going to be managing him. So a PM comes into work and then he refreshes his screen. And then as soon as he refreshes his screen, he can see that, okay, so there's some information in here that Bob must have posted, right? So and then he looks at the bottom of the screen and you can see the workflow status. And uh, he looks at the values. He says, okay, these are good 500, but that one doesn't seem right. So he looks at the uh, node E. So it takes ownership of node E, says, okay, this is mine now, I'm going to start working on it, and then refreshes his screen. Now he's the current owner of um, this node. He's going to also put a comment in here and then uh, send it back to Bob and will say, Bob, uh, this is not what we agreed on. Please adjust to 2200. And he posts it as a comment to poor Bob. Okay, he closes this. He says, okay, so I can't approve this, but this one looks okay. So he's going to go ahead and approve the uh, C unit. And then he's going to say, okay, I don't want to approve the E1, so I'm going to just go ahead and send it back to Bob. He rejected it. And as soon as he refreshes the screen again, now he's got the approved and rejected signs on the screen. Now Bob comes back next day and then he's happy, but all of a sudden he looks at his notes. He's like, oh wow, what's going on here? There's a reject option in here. And he looks at the value in here. So he goes ahead and checks the comments and uh, based on the uh, sign that he has seen there's a comment in there coming from his boss and it says Bob this is not what we agreed on please adjust he says oh shoot that's right I had to do this 2200 as opposed to 3500 so he says okay I'm going to go ahead and take the ownership back again okay and refresh my screen and then say all right let's do 2200 then as soon as he is done with it, he puts a comment there to his boss, um, to PM, adjusted accordingly, uh, post, all right? And then he says, okay, I'm done with this. Now I can go ahead and submit this form or submit this node. So it's, he submits and Bob is done again. All right, that's the end of our demo. And this is a very quick and simple uh, Plan Analytics workspace, a custom workflow that you can build by yourself. If you have any questions, as usual, please feel free to reach out. Thanks and have a great day.